Welcome back to The Ranking Show. My name's Cam Williams, and we didn't have any matches last week on the ATP, but we had a couple on the WTA, which is why we're doing The Ranking Show this week. There have been some major changes in the top 10 for the women, actually, this week because of some of the scheduling that happened last year. Of course, this time last year, we had the clay court season. A lot of points were lost during this time. It's a bit of a hangover from last year, but let's go take a look at the results from this week because we had two tournaments on the WTA and some new winners as well. So to start off, we had the Luxembourg Open, and we had Danish youngster Tausen taking out Ostapenko, the defending champion of Luxembourg, in three tight sets, 6-3, 4-6, 6-4. That's her second title in her young career, and she's only 18 years old, so another player to watch out for on the WTA that's a teenager. Of course, we've got a lot of them at the moment with players like Fernandez, Rodakanu, Sviantek, just to name a few. So watch out for Tausen as well. And at the Slovenia Open, we had Paulini winning her first title, defeating Ellison Riz. 7662, and that is the first time Paulini has lifted a WTA trophy. So, congratulations to her, and she's been rewarded in the rankings after lifting her first trophy. Let's go start with the men's top 10 rankings because there is nothing actually to be said because there was no tournaments played this week on the main circuit. Djokovic stays at number one with Medvedev at number two. Sidney Pass at number three, followed closely by Alexander Zverev at number four. Rublev at number five. Rafa stays at number six. Veratini at seven. Team at eight. Federer at nine. And Kasper Ruud rounds out the top 10. Now, taking a look at the race to the ATP Finals, the race to Turin, and three players have qualified, but a couple of players are very close to qualifying. We have Djokovic, already qualified on top at the moment, with Medvedev behind him, also qualified, and Sitipassi number three, also qualified. But Alexander Zverev, he is only a couple of wins away from claiming the fourth spot in the ATP Finals. He only has to gain about 80 points or so to get into that ATP Finals. So he's only one or two wins away, and maybe in, at Indian Wells in a couple of weeks, that's when he will qualify. We've got Rublev. He's not far behind either. He gets a couple of good quarterfinal results to finish off the year. He'll qualify. Berrettini's at number six. Rudd's at number seven. Her catch at eight. Oje Aliassim at nine. And Yannick Sinner rounds out the top 10 this week. Going over to the rankings for the WTA, the top 10 for the WTA, and some big changes this week because of the points that were lost from last year in Rome. Ash Barty, she stays at number one with Sabalenka at number two. Pushkiver at number three. Svetlana at four. But Naomi Osaka, she drops down three more spots to number eight in the world, being replaced by Krejcikova, who goes up two spots to a career high number five in the world. Sophia Kennan, who was number six, she goes down to number seven with Igor Sviantek going from eight to number six, which is a career high for her. So Krejcikova, Sviantek, the past two French Open champions are both at career high rankings with Kennan, who we haven't seen for a while, dropping down and Osaka continuing to fall down the rankings. So be interested to see how this plays out over the next couple of weeks, especially without Osaka playing. We don't know if she's going to come back at all this year. And Sophia Kennan, we still haven't seen the best of her in 2021. So that could change a lot. Muguruza stays at number nine, and Kvitova rounds out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race to the finals, the race to Mexico this year has actually been changed from Shenzhen to Mexico just because of the COVID virus around Shenzhen and the restrictions, so they've changed the venue to Mexico. Ash Barty, she's number one at the moment, with Sabalenka at number two, Krejcikova at three, Pliska at four, and those four players have actually qualified. It's not official yet on the WTA website, but going through their points... They cannot be kicked out of the top eight. So those four names, Barty, Sabalenka, Krejcikova, Pliskova, they're all going to be playing at the end of the year in the WTA finals. Sviantek's at number five. Sakari at number six. Osaka at number seven. Muguruza at eight. Jabor at nine. And Pavlichenkova drops out of the top ten, being replaced by Mertens after Mertens played last week, gaining some points. But Pavlichenkova is playing this week, so she might be able to regain that spot she has a good week this week. Having a look at some of the players that have gone up in the rankings, and like I said at the start of the show, the two winners of last week, Towson and Paulini, they've both been rewarded in the rankings with career-high rankings. towson has gone up 18 spots after winning her second title, going to 52 in the world, which is a career high for her. And Paulini, after winning her first ever WTA title, she's gone up 23 spots to number 64 in the world, which is a career high for her as well. So a couple of players playing well last week and getting rewarded with career high rankings this week. The players that have gone down in the rankings, and as I mentioned, the points that were coming from last year's Rome Open for a couple of these players has dropped off with Halep going down three spots after failing to defend the points from Rome from last year. And Von Drusova, she goes down eight spots after failing to defend the semi-final points from this time last year when they played in Rome. So a couple of players that dropped down because the clay court season last year, they did well, but they didn't back it up this year with the clay court points from a couple of months ago. No, it's confusing, but it's all starting to pan out now. 
So there you have it. No change to the men's rankings, not yet anyway. We've got some tournaments coming up over the next couple of weeks. Of course, Indian Wells is happening in a couple of weeks' time. We've got the Labor Cup this week, which is not a points tournament, but we're going to see some of those big names in action. And they're all going to be playing each other as well, which is going to be a lot of fun to see. But the women's side, it's starting to shape up now. We've got players like Osaka. She keeps dropping down the rankings. How far will she drop? Will she drop out of the top 10 by the end of the year? Let me know down in the comments below. What is the most shocking result for you? Or maybe what's the most surprising for you? Are you surprised by some of the players that have gone up in the rankings? Maybe some of the teenagers that seem to be dominating the WTA at the moment? Let me know down in the comments below. For me, Osaka is a big shock for me. Uh, she looks like she's going to drop out of the top 10 by the end of the year. Hopefully that's not the case. And hopefully we do see her again in 2021. So no changes to the men's rankings this week. But the WTA rankings, some big changes in that top 10.